coin flip. So far we've seen Azul choose to go first after losing game one. The coin flip will dictate any changes in that approach. Yeah, and um, this is uh, this is the second time they face off. Therefore, mm -hmm. they have as much information as they could possibly want, right? Yeah. From um, from each other's decks. So now we're gonna see Azul's perspective, as you can see here, um, with a cool mustache, keeping it stylish as always, Azul. Um, and this off could be to... a, this could be a really interesting turn. He's got Beast Energy. He's got Volkner. So if he wants to... Like, he's only got one Ball Search available. Does he want to try and Jirachi his way out of it straight out the gate? Or does he want to try and do the, the tanking thing again? <laughs> he's not happy. <laughs> we know that much. <laughs> he is indeed not happy. Um, yeah, because in this mirror match, it's like... Going for Jirachi, it'll get it'll net you one card, but unless that's a supporter, then definitely not worth it because it's gonna be a, a Pokemon that's much easier to get knocked out than the Coco. Man, that's all. Got a nest ball here. He's gonna go ahead and grab that Jirachi. It's the safest choice, but as you can see, he's not too happy about it. Yeah, definitely. Real men hold the nest ball and just pass there and just say, if you got win, you got win. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, not completely out of the question for sure, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, you nest ball into fine. another Jirachi? I think it's reasonable to go second Jirachi here. Also, just the Zapdos or a Buzz. And then switch Even back out into the Coco. Yeah. I think because he's already holding on to Rope Guzma, I'll just try and fill this hand up. Okay. Well, it's worked out for him. More ball search is always good. Yeah, so no Lily for him, no Cynthia, but um, double Jirachi, Coco, and the cards he has remaining in his hand, definitely what you would expect, perhaps, of Falvilli, so... Choosing to hold energy. Potentially could have seen one get attached to... One of the Jirachis to maybe play around Absol? No, he, he did attach to retreat with uh, Coco. Oh, you're right, you're right. Of yeah. Robin gets the skateboard. No sign of Zapdos or energy here. And Robin, I don't believe, does play Lotto, so there's no way for him to find energy this turn. He can't get the turn on attack, which is huge. It's actually one of the most dictating things in the matchup who takes the first kill and this is one where you can't yeah i would love to see the the second player's options with jirachi here that's definitely something i could try to work on implementing for the next invitational we see robin grab a nest ball so with the energy whiff as Ulstrachi will live to see another day. Pretty huge. Really, yeah. really huge. This is what you really hope for when you go first. Azul wasn't able to develop his own Absol, but just because Robin didn't lead a Jirachi just makes all of Robin's turn one plays much more awkward. And it means he's able to... Uh... Stella Wish, he's already got a guaranteed knockout. He's going to be able to start wishing for even more switching options, which is always a thing you want to keep on top of in the matchup. Yep. So, looks pretty good from where we're sitting. Are we thinking Guzma up Blitzel? Yeah, gotta be the play. Yep, I agree. Um, obviously, four cards off of the strike are much better than than one off of Jirachi. And limits robin's options for next turn um still no energy for robin so definitely gonna lead with the stellar wish here looking for at the very least a volkner or ideally a volkner rather mm. and seems like he oh. wins it Yikes. wow might be another top right from robin <laughs> yeah <laughs> man 
he was so reliant on that Zeb striker. Yeah. Zul taking it away from him. Yep. It's going to have... Now, second chance to try and get that Volkner. It has to be exactly Volkner at this point. Yep. Or Cynthia into the right cards. But that's true. That's, that's true. randomness. Hello. Oof. That's another whiff. Choice band. Yikes. So. Could not get much worse for Robin. Yeah. Well, I guess Zul's turn. Pick up. Yeah, it means he has the option to maybe look towards dealing with Absol, but same time, just dealing with Mojirachi seems so tempting. You've got to be thinking, what what's my opponent missing outside of just raw supporters? And you can see Azul's like skirting over the Absol to see whether it's worth going for it. Just freeze up. When you're the one going ahead in prizes, you just want to not slip. And getting rid of opposing Absols means that you open up more switching options for yourself. So it's definitely a tempting one. Yeah. If you're Robin off of the escape rope, you probably bring up the Nihiligo, I would say. Mm. Pretty much has to be. I mean, it could yeah. be the other Jirachi, but yeah. Force the Electro Power. See the attachment to the Blitzel. Yep. Just the Lily. Yeah, so is... going up two prizes is just really far ahead. In a yeah. non GX matchup, two prizes is a very wide margin. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of people do criticize that in standard we don't have any comeback cards right now, and that is true, right? Like, at this point. Um... Robin's best bet is for Azul to whiff, but there's very little he can do mm -hmm. to create that situation. I think it's highlighted even more so in a mirror like this, where it's literally, <clears throat> Robin could have won if he hit energy, and yeah. now he can't, and now he can't win for the rest of the game, doesn't matter what he does, and that feeling is horrible. Yeah, it is. Uh, so, more combat mechanics is always welcome. <clears throat> but it is somewhat of a risk of the linear approach that this deck has, that you don't have any inbuilt mechanics like a Necrozma GX or an Ultra Necrozma, for example. That's all going to keep the pressure on, take full advantage of the beast energy. He's just going to pick up that Absol and leave a big chunky active Pokemon for Robin to deal with to really push that advantage even further. And yeah, there's the top right <laughs> button <laughs> that Robin um, has been using. He's been the only one that's been consistently conceding, right? Yep, he's got no time to waste, apparently. Yeah. But he All knows. Right. He's been in the game long enough that when you're three prizes down in an on GX mirror match with a worse board state and a less hand size, probably not going to come back for that one. Yeah, definitely. Two prizes behind. Like, if you're one prize, then you have hope. Two prizes and the, the setup difference at that point is just not... Not going to be possible. Um, I'm going to run to a restroom... Joe, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll be right, right back. <laughs> Robin's busy. Yeah, he's running limitless, man. He's got stuff to do. I wonder who's going to choose to go first. Is Robin going to choose to go first or second? What does the world champ think about the mirror? He's been pretty bad at not starting Jirachis. So is Azul, to be fair. More Jirachi starts forehead. So, getting straight back into it. Game two. 
<clears throat> Robin with the choice. It looks like Azul's going to ask him the question. Ah, he already gets to choose. And he is going to choose to go first. So just go first. That's the answer. Azul not starting Jirachi. Feels bad, man. Robin does. And he also has Blitzel, Ultra Ball, Lily. So his turn is very, very strong here. Azul looking a little bit off the boil. He has Ball Search Energy Cynthia, so he'd be looking for just a switch card. So it's not asking for much for Azul to get the first prize of the game. <clears throat> it's down to Robin to see if he can get anything like Absol going turn one to make life more difficult. Interestingly, throwing away a switch and a rainbow. That's his guaranteed attachment gone and a switch card as well. That's a really interesting ultra ball. He's valuing the Guzma more than a switch or the guaranteed attachment. He's going to go straight for Absol. This is the only thing you can do to slow down the opponent when you're the player going first. Robin recognizing that. He does draw back into Ball Search. Stadium can almost definitely be put into play just to maybe hurt Azul's opening hand, make their opening lilies weaker if they draw into their own shrines. We're going to see a Stella Wish. Grabs himself another Ultra Ball, which is probably going to be nice. You can also bench the Jirachi if he wishes. He's actually going to opt for the Boswell by the looks of things. Right, I'm back. So what did I miss? Robin's had a really strong turn one here. He's had a strong Lily. He's got Absol down. He's also... Looks like he's switching into maybe even the Boswell here. Just to make life difficult for Azul. He's debating it. That's two switches down for Robin. He's actually going to go into the Prism Star. And Azul, <laughs> surprised by it. <laughs> it does make life difficult for him. <laughs> I gotta say, Azul does have his emoji game on point. Well, didn't matter what Robin left up there. Azul's drawn blanks. Oh, yeah. Just have to pass it to Robin. And he can go ahead and Guzma the only Jirachi on Azul's board, which feels really bad. He could even go for a uh, Ultra Ball and start sprinting as well. He is super far ahead in board state right now. Ah, he's actually going for Zapdos to get value from the Electro Power. Yeah. Interesting one there, really, because I understand trying to get value from the E Powers because you only are limited to four of them. Um, and you're already playing a Guzma that turn. But... Yeah, I mean, giving, with, with Absol... Giving them all is always scary. Yeah, I guess the Absol is kind of the kicker. Yeah. It definitely makes... Like, in order for Azul to respond, now he needs another Zapdos, another Energy, a mm -hmm. Switching card, and an Electro Power. So, so yeah. it's four very specific cards. Whereas if he knocks yeah. out... The Jirachi, it's only switch electro power. So definitely married to both. Yeah, I mean the good news for Azul is he just now has his engine, so Nespool Guzma energy is enough to keep up. But again, the very match is not just about keeping up, it's finding a way to get ahead, and that's not always easy. Yeah. Trying to deny a prize from the opponent. Robin still with a far superior board. Azul trying to make it weaker. Dealing with the Jirachi. Robin holding on to ropes, but it looks like he's pretty reliant on a sprint here. Yeah, sprint needs to find him a switching card or a Guzma. Um, like switching card and Electro Power or a Guzma. Mm -hmm. And sprinting double rope does not feel good at all. That feels yeah. really rough. He might rope. He he might nest ball rope a Jirachi and just try and weave in a Stella Wish here, knowing that he already has boards. I think that's likely what we're going to see here. Be surprised if it's not the play. Yeah, I agree. It puts less pressure on him having to find Electro Power. Already playing two switches, sp sprinting the double rope just feels awful. That's all picking off the Absol from prizes which Robin doesn't know yet, but it's just going to make 
Robin's early plays get really painful. How's it going, Jays fan? 2000. We're <laughs> good. Coming to the end of a great long day. Pretty long, long, yeah. Had you ever streamed for so long? What's your longest stream, Joe? I've done a 24 hour. Well, I've done a 12 oh, wow. hour, and then Jack's done a 12 hour before. Oh, wow. So this is like kitty business for you. This is easy. <laughs> it's not quite as much talking, though. Like, commentary is full focus the whole time. When you're just streaming, playing Pizza Geo, it's focused, but it's a different kind of focus, right? Yeah. Playing Quagnag only takes so much focus. <laughs> 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 Don't tell Ross Gotham that though. <laughs> okay, so wow, Ooh, choosing boy. two. This could really punish Robin down the line. Double yeah. rope, double switch out the window. Yep. That's gross. It's amazing that you didn't try and weave in a Stellar Wish there. I'm actually so surprised by that. Regardless, Robin gets his E power. Yep. And has double Guzma, so... I mean, it's like... Trying to think, Robin has double Guzma for two prizes, and then has Coco GX for another one. The last prize is where it might get tricky. Yeah, it might be, once again, weaving in the Zeb Striker if he has to at some point. It's an option that you might have to go for. Yeah. But that makes his Coco weaker. There's also, of course, Sledgehammer turns that can get weaved in. Yeah, that's true, that's true. And the, like he... the nightcap. Uh huh. The da it's not the damage wise that's the problem, it's just if the Absol ever makes him stumble. If he ever has to go into a Jirachi and then flops from it. But look at this. It's all with a really ugly hand. He's just like, where the hell does this energy go? Does he have enough energy to Coco GX here? Um, In his he might do. I honestly but... don't know. He no. might? He's lost two Zapdoses, both with Lightning, yeah. Yep, okay. This is the only player Zul has, so he's making it. He's behind a prize and putting a GX on the field, which is always awful, but just yep. doing nothing is basically the same thing. With with his own shrine in place, so I guess Azul wasn't very hydrated for this one either. <laughs> <laughs> There was probably a good reason at the time, it's just... He never thought this would have to be the case. Especially in Mirror, you basically never expect a Coco unless it's your last prize. Okay, so... Um, Robin's options... Kuzma into the Jirachi... Um, I don't think you sprint to Kuzma's, but I guess you all trouble it, so... Oh, never mind. He's gonna respond with his own Coco. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Just enough with the GX plus the Shrine Ping, and then to really get rid of the Guzma, do you sprint the Guzma away? Some more resources. It's yeah. really ugly. I'm seeing a Coco respond to Coco by the looks of things. I think it's definitely big if he sprints away that Kuzma. Not a fan. He's looking through his own discard, like, can I do this? Can I really yeah. am I really doing this? I think you're right. I think you it's a hold. Yeah. At least I would hold, right? But I'm also not the world champion, so <laughs> he knows his uh, deck better than we do. Yeah. Just because, uh, obviously, we're only watching as all sides, so we don't know the prize situation and whatnot. Yeah, decides to hold on to it, gets rewarded by an energy, which is probably what you need to keep going next turn. Because you have the Kuzma into the Jirachi KO. And I mean, your Coco is probably going to survive as well. Mm -hmm. Azul doesn't even have. Uh, well, no, never mind. Wait, what? Yeah, he's just trying to pick out more Stellar Wishes. But now he needs Rainbow and Switch. Well, I guess he's hedging. He's saying, I'm so far behind, I can't win if this uh, 
if I can't, like, nightly go respond. Yeah, but, like, he had the switch into the night, and then I, then he illegal. He had it already? Yeah, he switched into the other Jirachi. Oh, man. Yeah, but he didn't have any draw at that point, so he didn't have... Oh, right, right, right. yeah, he grabbed a little... Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Alrighty. Game three it is. Game three it is to determine the last player who will advance to the top four. Pretty insane. Yeah. North America versus Europe. We already have two European players and one North American player. Will Jimmy face off against Azul or will he face off against the world champion? I think it would be quite a, kind of nice to have a balance of two of each, but, you know, seeing Robin win is never a bad thing. <laughs> Represent for the world champ and for EU. Again, completely unbiased commentary from me. Completely unbiased. Not like you're from the same continent or anything. <laughs> I probably spend more time with Azul than... Uh than Robin just because it's all streams <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't know that I'm spending time with him alright so we're on to the last game of the day guys we are going to have the semi-finals and the finals tomorrow um, at 12 just like today um, will be a much shorter stream for sure we only have three best of threes to play out to crown the winner of the first and hopefully well the first of hopefully many tablemon invitationals well if it's worth the work for you <laughs> then hopefully there'll be more i mean i definitely enjoy doing it um mm. definitely definitely enjoy doing it um all eight players are great and um, I've had the the chance with some more than others, but I've had the chance to to speak and have friendly chats with all of them. So definitely an enjoyable thing to to organize so far. And of course, spending all day with you, it's been great, Joe. Hey. This has been good fun. I do genuinely love just watching these games from very high caliber players because we can pick their minds. Even put our, our own, like put us in their shoes at times and think about how we would have played turns. In some cases, it's very different. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. Both players with the Jirachi start. Yeah. Very nice. We're in for a, definitely a grindy matchup where. Oh, and a supporter for each of them. Easy. Yeah. We're going to see a full, proper game here, game three already. Azul kicking things off with Absol energy. Big Lily, looking really good from him. And the potential retreat into the Coco Prism to complicate the first turn KO for for Robin. So I think that's what you be you would be eyeing here. Yeah, he's eyeing up potentially Ultra Ball to give himself guaranteed and like another Jirachi or a Blitzel. Also, there's a small debate between uh, getting the Guzma here, so you could do that sort of retreat into Coco play. I guess he's already holding on to Rope, so. Mm -hmm. The retreat into Coco. Is he going to Ultra Ball for another Jirachi? No, he's going to send it over by the looks of things. There's definitely reasons to it, but at the same time, if Robin's going to like pick off the Zapdos, you want to make sure you keep hold of the Lightning and whatnot. So, good arguments for it on both sides. Looks like Robin is holding on to Switch. He's holding on to one E power. He's holding on to Zapdos energy already, so he can genuinely wish into another E power here. He's doing it before the Lily, which is interesting. Obviously, he's hoping to try and find like a Guzma to guarantee a knockout on a Jirachi, or even on an Absol if he wants to. Um, so, interesting line here. He's looking for E-Powers, he's looking for Volkners, Guzmas, and those are all good outs for him. Kuzma, I feel like, would be the the weakest though, because it doesn't advance. Oof, <laughs> doesn't advance his his board too too much. But yeah, it's the only it's way just, to yeah, guarantee a turn one KO. Mm -hmm. And spending double E power into the Coco doesn't feel all that good. I swear. 
Sewell is down a Jirachi, down a board. It's a little bit ugly, but Robin kicks off with the first prize of the game. Azul picks up his own Guzma. He's left jirachi -less. It might be something he tries to fix this turn with the Ultra Ball. I feel like Ultra Balling a Jirachi, playing a Rope, and then just Synthering feels like the best move here. You're always going to Ultra Ball away the Choice Band. That's a useless card. Yeah. You can see the Lightning also being a candidate when you've got Coco already in play for yourself. Yep. Chooses like the Synthia, though. Yeah. Maybe it's an indication. Yeah, it's an indication he's going to grab another Zappy. That's also like really fine. Choosing this over a um, Jirachi is a little interesting. That's also an interesting choice to go for the Rainbow Banded one over just a Lightning Energy. Mainly so that you could dance to the Ancients back. Lightning Energy is at a faster rate. Yeah. But you're not too concerned about the Choice Band. There's also the counter argument that if you find yourself in a spot that you need to escape board your Zapdos. So there's arguments on both sides, really. Regardless, he's going to respond and take a prize against Robin. Yeah. And benches his his bulky Buzzle so that he has a great escape rope target here. Mm-hmm. That's true. I mean, he de he also had the Coco with basically the same yeah. HP. Um, but you'd rather lose the Buzzle than the Coco. If it comes to that. Robin still sitting on that hand with a bunch of switches. He might be in a spot where he has to burn both here. Stellar wishing, looking for well, not too much. Really, more ball searches. What he's after because he's already holding on to switch e power. He's got a Cynthia or a Lily. Ultra Ball's exactly what he's after. Can I lose the Coco GX? But with double. Um, stretcher in the list. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. To find out the right time. You're always happy to bin him. Like it's it's really rare, rare situations that you actually use him. Yeah. It's been used a few times in the last couple games just because both of them have been stumbling in points and like had to put it down. But normally, it's just for the bin in this matchup. Interesting that Robin chose to pitch the. Cynthia over the Lily. He had the option to just Lily for five here, but guarantee a Zeb Striker. Maybe he's expecting Azul to just knock out the Blitzel anyway. So instead, just getting a fresh six rather than five and hold on to Zebra. It's a small thing there. Yeah. I mean, you would be happy to see Zebra um, off of the Cynthia, right? So yeah, if you already had it. Yeah, it's just one of those arguments where Azul's probably trying to hunt it down. So you're kind of hedging that yeah. he'll have a relatively optimal turn. Yep. Sledgehammer plays into the Rainbow Energy Zapdos very nicely. Exactly. Saves you an Electro Power, uses up one less Zapdos. So yeah, pretty nice from Azul here. Um, he's not missing a beat so far, but he is one prize behind, so... Mm -hmm. um, I do think his setup looks a little bit better than Robin's, just slightly, because he has the two attackers established and the Absol. But Robin is in the price lead, so as long as Robin keeps hitting the right combination of cards, it's going to be tough for Azul to make this comeback. One thing I do really like from Azul, when he is the person who's behind in this matchup, he's never the one benching his own Jirachis or Blitzels. So often in this matchup, you'll see people do that to sort of scrabble to build a slightly stronger board. Azul's just hoping the only way he comes back is by keeping tanky Pokemon around and not giving them the free Guzma options. So I really like this. It's a really small thing that a lot of people might be missing, but like it would be so easy for him to just nest ball out of Blitzel, bench that Jirachi, hold the stretcher. But he's just like, no, I really want to make it hard for Robin if ever I can. So this is the only way he's going to try and mount a comeback. It's by having stuff like this Buzzwall active, taking advantage of that rainbow, and force Robin to have Guzma's plus E powers. Uh, so, really, really nice play from Azul. It's really all he can do. Let's see Robin kick off with the Ultra Ball. He can get rid of Stadium Energy fairly contently. Yeah. Pretty well, easy. 
Crazy discard some. Of course, the stadium you can play down to thin with the Lily, but you can't afford to get rid of an Electro Bar here. Not when double Electro Bar is what will catch you the knockout. He does get himself Guzma E Power, so that's pretty good. We targeting down the Absol here. I feel like we almost always are. Yeah. Makes it less of a hindrance for you later on in the match. So yeah. if you're Azul, I think you would actively try to find a stretcher to put it back immediately. Yeah, Azul proactively stretched last turn for that second Zapdos. It could well yeah. have just been held, and he could have had that option this turn. Yeah. Instead, he's just promoting Zapdos, knowing that he's going to kick off his turn with a rope here, or at least do it at some point in the game. Robin still taking the prize, so Azul will have another turn of not benching small hit point things. So he will literally just probably attach to the other Zapdos and rope. Yeah, so actually commenting in chat that um, the stretcher was a misplay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, comes down to hydration, I think, as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's the only reason, generally. Interesting escape board on the Sapdos. I guess he's so committed to not benching any low hit point Pokemon that he's just trying to draw deeper with Lily. But is that better than on the Coco? Uh, I mean, probably. I mean, if Robin uh, it's whips a, it's a, a KO, one, yeah. You're already... Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, no. Um, so I guess, I mean, I don't know. I generally don't know. It feels a little weak. Yeah. Robin does have board now. He can Lily for five. He's played down that Electro Power, so he's done pretty well. He's got through the awkward Absol. He's now got Blitzel. Blitzel board is also like the perfect thing because if Azul does re-establish Absol, you can just evolve and then you keep your skateboard value. So that's really nice. Finally, you can see some nest balls from Robin building from... Basically, he's had two bench Pokemon like the entire game. Yeah. Um, doesn't have a great follow-up hand, though, after taking this KO, so... This is everything, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I generally would not be surprised to see the fourth Jirachi hit with that Nest Ball. Because that's what you would want to promote, right? Assuming the Sapdos goes down. I think he's more worried about the Jirachi going down. If Azul Guzma's the Jirachi, then yeah. you just go back into the Blitzel, you're really unhappy, because you're just prize and top deck. If you Nest Ball for the extra Jirachi, you protect yourself from that so yeah yeah that's what i meant like going for that uh, the fourth yeah. jirachi with that yeah with that nest ball well he picks up a rope <laughs> happy days yeah it's <laughs> good for him it's all, all right a pretty awkward turn that board was in hand right now oh man he'd be a lot happier yeah i mean sure you, you attach energy and you have the retreat but that energy could have been dedicated elsewhere. It's not that big a deal, I guess. Yeah, pay retreat's still fine. Pay retreat, Lily, E Power. I like. I do really enjoy how committed Azul is to not benching any Pokemon like this Jirachi. So committed to this route because he yeah. just has to think that there'll be a turn. He just has to believe that there will be a turn where he can grind out Robin. We're getting to the end game. But he just has to believe in this line. It's the only thing he can do. He's actually going to bench the Blitzel finally, though. Yeah. Caving a little. Prioritize the the energy over the Electro Power. Which is interesting. The power up Buzzwolf potential swing around turns. He's going to knock out this Zapdos. The first turn where he's put down a little baby basic for the entire game for Robin. So. Robin mm. picks up a Cynthia. Looking 
looking at this whole game, it does feel like Azul is being punished for going first, right? I mean, that's the deal. Robin started a... Did he start a Jirachi? I think he did, right? Started a Jirachi, yeah. got the first prize. Yeah. Azul did everything in his power as well. Like, it's just Jirachi got Robin a Guzma, and he was already holding Electro Power Energy Zapdos, which is like a really... Like, it has a lot, right? It's, it's asking a lot for a hand. Azul did everything he could. He had Chunky Basic Active. He had Absol Down. It's just Robin still had the answers. Yeah. Okay, so... Robin's still, like, skating through here. He's, he's gonna manage another KO, I assume. But looks like it's there, yeah. Can he get that last one, that crucial last one? That crucial, crucial last one. I mean, this time it's not guaranteed just yet. He still needs an Electro Power or a Guzma off the Stellar Wish. He's taking a long time on it, though. He is going to yeah. grab E Power. Does he have enough Zapdos in his discard? Oh, sorry, in his deck. The reason why, like, I'm just wondering why it's taking him so long. Maybe he's looking at other cards. Yeah. Nihiligo. Well, Nihiligo can't use Electro Power. <laughs> that much is... Designed. That's true, but he does get the KO it's, it's on... The weakness on the buzz, yeah. Like, yeah, gets it with... Oh, no, wait. If he copies Haptos... Oh, no, he can copy um, oh, no, it doesn't Swing Around. Weakness. Yeah, he, he can copy Swing Around. That's true, yeah. Yeah, for one second I thought he was like, oh no, the Zapdos doesn't yeah. apply weakness, but yeah, he can copy any attack. Yeah. So Robin's going to go into the yeah. little free retreat blitzel, why not? Yeah, being very proper, right? It's like... See, this is this is what we ask. Yeah. <laughs> Sequencing 101 with Robin yeah. Schultz. It's like, obviously he's going to use Nihiligo, but still... You know, something could happen. Yeah, and it's better to have the habit of doing things like this and it not mattering than not being in the habit and when it does matter, you just flopped. Yep. So, does Robin have the game-winning cards in his hand? Uh, he does, right? The Substrika takes care of the Zapdos. Uh-huh. That would be it. Um, Azul, Azul does not have any way to... He'll be gusting Blitzel, though. It feels like it's the best target of the three. Oh, yeah, true, true. Definitely. So then it comes down to... Zapdos plus Guzma plus Electro Power. Oh, no, he has the he Volkner. Can, he can Volkner, yeah. yeah. As long as there's E Power, he's pretty chill. Yeah. It was like Robin's got it just about wrapped up. Yep. Azul, like, this was definitely the closest game we've had uh -huh. between these two, and it does seem like Azul was punished here for going first. Sure, <laughs> he got that extra turn to set up, but then that crucial turn one KO. Azul, taking a look at Robin's discard pile, seeing how many Ultra Ball and whatnot he'd played through, and thinking, well, if I, I think this is the best hedge. I honestly see both as being good options, but this is hedging that it's harder for Robin to find an Ultra Ball in other combinations of cards than yeah. it is, because two Ultra Balls are already played. Yep. So it's a very reasonable hedge from, from Azul there. Just so happens Robin is already holding Ultra Ball or Volkner, either would work. And he can just rainbow and smack. And that wraps up the game, Robin progressing. After a close three-game series. Yeah, very, very good games um, with Azul here. Um, but yeah, Robin does end up winning the ace match and thus advancing into top four, uh, second place of Group B. So we are going to have the first semifinal with Jimmy against Robin. Yeah, we just saw Robin play. We're going to have Zapdos versus Zork. Um, it does seem like Zork might have the edge in that matchup, thanks to Alolan Mok. 
but um, Substrike definitely compensates a little bit for that. And then in the other bracket, we have a Malamar Mirror once again with Tord versus Pedro. Um, both of them playing basically identical lists. So it's going to be very interesting to see um, how they maneuver the mirror match, right? And how many Tapu Cures and self KOs we get to see. We've seen already some wacky Mali mirrors. <laughs> so with these two at the helm, it's going to be interesting, a back and forth between them. But Ultra Mali guaranteed for the finals. And as you said, there's plays on both sides for the Zoro Rock player and the... Uh, the Zapdos Beasts player. Obviously, you play the Beasts so you can have those big swing turns. Boswell knocking out Zoroarks and Nihiligo potentially copying Dangerous Rogue for big two prize swings as well. Um, and the Zep Striker to play around um, Muck. So, intricate back and forth in that matchup as well. So, we've got four amazing players who have made it through, and they're going to be really interesting matchups for very different reasons as well. Yeah, and so I really appreciate everyone who's tuned in. Um, we averaged almost 200 uh, viewers at the same time throughout the whole day. So thank you to everyone who's been here. Um, if you're watching on YouTube as well, thank you so much for um, for watching. And yeah, I'm really happy uh, with how everything went. Thank you so much, Joe, for joining me today. I look forward to seeing more crazy, amazing games tomorrow with this fantastic group of players. I think I lost Joe. Oh, sorry. I thought you were wrapping up. Yeah. No, no. Awesome. I mean, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, it, uh, it's fine. <laughs> back tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I'll. Uh, we'll see. We'll see you guys tomorrow, same time, uh, 12 p.m. Central Standard, so 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific. I believe that's right. Um, 6 p.m. European Standard Time. I'm not sure about the yeah, European time six. zones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, thank you for watching. I'll try to get this on YouTube as quickly as possible the whole day. Um, I probably won't be able to start working on that today, but definitely tomorrow at some point. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.